Greetings uh, ladies and gentlemen. In this video I'm going to show you how to create a shopping cart using Redux uh, Toolkit. So this is uh, the final uh, product of uh, this uh, tutorial. So I have uh, products here. So each product has a price, an image and a title. Right now if I click on the cart icon it takes us to the cart page and it says that the cart is uh, empty then uh, if I go back and add an item you can see the quantities reflected here that we have one item in the shopping cart if I add another one and another those are three so if I click on it, you can see that these products will be available in the shopping cart, the subtotal, the quantity, and the total of the cart. So if I click on this button, the add button, it increases the quantity and also reflects the subtotal price and the, the total price. So reduction also reflects and if the quantity goes below one the item will completely be removed from the cut we can also remove the item irrespective of the quantity by clicking on, clicking on this button here and the cut will become empty then if we have several items and we want to clear the cut at once we can just click on this button there and we shall have an empty cut without uh, spending so much time on uh, introduction let's move to coding i have a project running on my browser because uh, i don't want to waste a lot of time you know designing these pages and designing the ui because uh, this is a very simple page i'll just take you through the structure of the project uh, very fast so that you get a full picture I'm also using a Visual Studio Code Editor for, for coding. So I created this using a React Byte. That's why it's running on a local host 5173. Then uh, I have uh, installed the React Router and that's why I'm able to add and navigate to the shopping cart, which is uh, nothing for now. Then I have the home page, which is uh, fetching data from some uh, fake API. So there is a, a fake store API, which is uh, free, provides uh, free resources. And uh, I'm fetching the 20 products. These products have uh, an image, a title, price, a description, category. But uh, for my case, I was just interested with the title, the price, and the image. I think that is enough, you know, for us to do the logic of the shopping cart. Sorry about that. So I'll take you to my structure once again. In the app.jsx, this is where I've done all the routing. So I have uh, two routes. The home page and the cart page then at the top i have the navigation one link is to the home page and the other link is to the shopping cart these two links then i have an icon here from the react icons so it's not very important but uh, just to make the ui look uh, clean and neat and then uh, for the styling i have used uh, tailwind CSS so I have installed the Tailwind here but uh, you can uh, use any styling library that you feel like then uh, let me go to the home page in the home page I have also installed Axios to for making the API calls so that's what I've done so I have handle fetch function here that uh, fetches data from the fake API so if you go to the fake API and click on these 20 products it will give you a JSON data so 
it's this URL here that I've copied and that I uh, used it to you know, fetch the products. And then uh, if I proceed, I have the use effect hook that calls my function. Then I have uh, empty products here at the beginning. Then when the app loads this fetched, then it's updated here. Then I'm logging the error down here. And then I also have a loading state that is going to track at the beginning. It's going to display the loading text because the API patch, I mean uh, fetching or calling of the API is going to take some time. So meanwhile, it shows the loading text. We can test that by refreshing the page. You see the loading for a few seconds, then we see the products. Good. Now that we have a picture of how I have designed the whole application, let's go ahead and implement uh, the shopping cart using the Redux toolkit. So I'll just navigate to their page, just search for Redux toolkit. Then I'll click on the first link, then click on get started. We shall need two things or two dependencies. One of them is the Redux toolkit itself, which will provide the global store to the application. Then the other one is going to be the React Redux, which acts as a bridge between our application and the store. So the React Redux allows our application to communicate to the Redux toolkit or to the global store. So let's go ahead and uh, install these dependencies. I'll just uh, create a new terminal and paste that here. Hit enter. Then as it's installing, I'll uh, copy the other one. Let's give it a few seconds. It's installed. We now install the React Redux. Yeah, it's also installed. Now, this is going to be a separate uh, state, but we need to use this state and we need to provide this state to the store. So how do we do this? I'm going to create a folder uh, within the source directory that is going to contain the files for the configuration of the global state. So I'll just call this a folder state, like that. Then within the state, I'll have one file known as a store. In the store.jsx, I'm going to describe uh, the store that I'm going to provide. This store is going to provide the state to the application. So I'll create a constant here known as a store. And it will uh, refer to a function known as configure store that comes from the Redux uh, toolkit. So let me call that function and also import it at the top. This function takes an object and the property, one of the properties of the object, and the only one that we are going to use here is known as a reducer. So this reducer is going to refer to all the states that we are going to track. So it's also an object. Because we are only interested with the shopping cart, so we are only going to describe the shopping cart here. So let's give the state of our shopping cart a name. I'll just call it a cart state. Meanwhile, I'm just going to have an empty object because we shall need to pass the reducer from the cart slice that we are going to describe. So let me create another file and call it a cart slice. JSX. Then here we are going to describe a slice. So a slice is basically an object which contains a reducer and it also contains the actions. So the reducer basically is a, a function that is uh, manipulating the state. These are functions that we are going to send the data so that these functions manipulate the state, either add data to the state either remove data from the state or update the data that's available in the state. So how do we communicate to this uh, 
reducer. We communicate to the reducer through the dispatch of actions, through sending of actions. So the reducer will only respond after receiving a specific action. And this action is going to be described within the reducer. So let's create the slice. So I'll just create a constant known as a cut slice. This cut slice refers to a function from the Redux toolkit known as a create slice. So let's uh, call it. Make sure you have imported it from the Redux uh, JS toolkit. So I told you that it takes an object, and in this object, we are going to uh, describe our initial state. So the initial state, because our shopping cart is going to have several products and these products are objects so we want an array of objects so initially it's going to be empty then we also need to give our slice a name so that uh, through the debugging for example if you decide to use the redux uh, dev tools you'll be able to get to your slice so let's give it a name is a requirement so we can give it any name, but it's good to give it a descriptive name so that uh, you are able to remember. And then it also takes uh, reduces as another property, and this reduces is a function. So within the reducers, we are going to describe the actions that the reducer will be listening to. So action creators. So the action creators are just functions that are going to manipulate our state based on what we send to the reducers. So action creators and the actions are going to have just a same name. So let's have an example of an action here called add. Actions takes two uh, variables. One is the state and the other one is the action. You don't have to name them state or actions, but uh, it's a uh, good practice to call them state and action so that you at least remember what they mean. So the first um, argument here stands for the state and the other one stands for the action information. The action information refers to the data that we are sending to the state and it's contained in a, a key known as a payload. I'll come to that. Now because our cut slice is going to create uh, contain all our actions and all the reducers, we need to export it so that uh, it's available within the other files in the project. So export cut slice as a default export. Let me use that. Then save it. Then we shall come back to our store because we need to pass a reducer here from our cut slice. So we shall just pass our cut slice and the property because a cut slice is an object we are interested with the reducer like that then we save it right now this state is not available for our application we need to provide it to the application and we do it at the top most entry level of our application so we have main.jsx this is our topmost entry level. It must enclose everything, including the, you know, the routing system so that uh, all the routes are able to access this state. And that's why I decided to describe or configure the routing within the app.jsx because I'm rendering now the app.jsx now, I mean here. So to be able to provide our state to our application, we shall need a provider from the React Redux. So I'll pass that provider there. Then I'll pass an attribute known as a store. Then in this store, we shall have now our store, which I need to export from here. So export default store like that. Then I'll come here and pass the store. Make sure you have imported it at the top the way I have done it like that. Now, to be able to now send the data and fetch the data, we shall make use of two hooks from uh, React 
Redux. One of them is known as uh, Use Dispatch, and the Use Dispatch hook is used for sending the data into our global store or into our Redux toolkit. Then uh, the other one is for fetching the data, which is uh, known as the Use Selector. So they're all going to come from uh, the React Redux, as I said. So we are done with the main.jsx and also the store.jsx. Let's go to the home page and start adding items to our global state. So I'll open the pages, then the home page. Then here, I'm going to call the hooks, initialize them. The first one, I'm going to name it uh, dispatch. And this is going to refer to the use dispatch. Like that, call it. Make sure you have imported it at the top. I have ES7 extension installed here, that's why you can just call a right name and uh, it gives me the suggestions. When I hit enter, it imports automatically. Then the other one is uh, the use selector and this one is going to fetch the data. So I'll just call the data global state and I'm going to call my use selector hook. The use selector hook takes a function and this function returns a state but also takes a state as an argument like that. So right now if I log this to the browser, so global state, let me just inspect my application. There is an error. I should be able to fix that. Let me just inspect. So at the error tab, it's saying that provider is not defined. Within the main.jsx, it seems like we never imported that, so let's fix it. So provider, I was relying on ES7 extension, so it must come from the React Redux. It has imported it now, so if I save that, the error should be gone. Yeah, so the loading is uh, fetching the data, good. If I go to the info section, I have a cut state, I mean an object here with a property of cut state, home page JSX line 25. So the global state now is able to, to appear in our application, that is uh, it's available because the use selector hook has provided it to, to the application. So it is an object with a property of uh, cut state because that is the only state that we have here. So let me go into detail so that we only get the cut state. So it is an empty array for now. So we need to start adding data into the global state. And I have told you that the reducers will only work or will only respond if they get a trigger or they receive instructions through an action. So we dispatch an action, we just send an action. It's like a letter to the reducer. We tell the reducer we have this letter. So each action has a specific instructions. So we have the add. So the reducer will do something if this action is dispatched. So I told you that the cut slice contains the reducers and it also contains the actions. So to be able to access this, we need to import the cut slice. So let's destructure that. Const uh, add, the, that is an action. Is the same as a cut slice. Cut slice is an object and uh, we are interested with the actions. So cut slice dot actions. Then uh, we need to dispatch this. So to send an action and uh, information to the shopping cart. So we are going to have a click event. So on click, 
we shall call an anonymous function here which is going to call our dispatch function or a hook that we have initialized it is just a function first of all we need to send an action which is a add that we have imported here and we have also described in the slice so we do that then we also need to send the information together with this action remember i have iterated over the array and each product within the array is represented by the product variable so we are sending the product sorry so it's product like that and save so if i click on any of the products right now nothing is happening there's a warning here no error debugging is part of coding so let's see so on click we call the dispatch and uh, we call the add action then we send the product we should be able to see the state working okay i'm just crazy because we haven't done anything we haven't manipulated the state so we need to manipulate if a reducer receives this action what do we want to do to the state so because uh, our state is represented by this variable and it's empty for now so we just need to add that item that we are sending the product so we use the push method and uh, we describe the object that we want to push so the object will be contained within the action under the property known as uh, payload so you're going to push the action dot payload so action dot payload represents this data that we are sending here this one this product is the payload so right now if uh, i go back and uh, in the info add you can see it's updating one object two three like that now let's fix something here because uh, these objects have unique ids and if i keep pressing a single object you'll see that we have a duplicate of objects and we don't want that because later it is these ids that are going to help us to you know manipulate single object so we don't need duplicates we only need one project i, I mean uh, object and we shall use its id to increase the quantity so to prevent a uh, duplication of uh, projects i mean uh, objects sorry i keep mentioning project we first need to check if this object is available in the state before we push it in so if it's available we don't need to push it so let's uh, do that we shall use the filter method so let's create a con constant here for a temporary state it's going to be state dot filter method it takes a function which takes uh, the object or an item within the array so we'll call it product let's just call it product then we are going to check if the product there is any product within the array remember the id is unique that has the same id as the product we are sending in which is represented by action dot payload dot uh, id so if it's there it means that we are going to have an array with uh, a length which is uh, greater than uh, zero so we have a condition here that checks if the temporary state dot length 
is uh, greater than 0, we don't want to add, so let's check if it's less than 1. Sorry. Less than 1. So if it's less than 1, it means that the, the object is not there, so let's copy this and paste it there. So if it less, it's less than 1, it's not there, and therefore we push. If it is uh, equal or more than 1, it is there, and therefore we just do nothing. So let's go back and test out this. So item 1, I've just added, clicked item 1, it's not working. So product dot id is the same as action dot payload dot id. It should be less than 1, not 0. So if I click item 1, it adds. If I keep clicking, it only adds once. So no duplication. Good. The other thing I've noted is that uh, our products do not have the quantity property. So we need to add that and def uh, default it to 1 so that whenever we add the product, it will have a quantity of uh, 1. It's very simple to do that. We shall just go to the home page and where we are adding the product. This is an object, so we need to add another property to this object. First of all, we shall take a copy of the object. Then we only add a new quantity because we don't want to override the values that we have there. So let's have a quantity property with a value of 1. Then save it. Then uh, let me refresh the whole application. If I click on uh, at least three objects there, inspect any of them, you'll find that we have the quantity property. So that is uh, working. So we now have enough information to work with the, the shopping cart page. And that is what we are going to do. I don't want to spend a lot of time on uh, styling. And therefore, I'm just going to copy this boilerplate for the styling section only, not for the concept, for the adding, removing, and manipulating the cut. We shall do that from uh, scratch. But the only part that I'm going to paste to the shopping cart is going to be uh, the styling. So let me just copy that code. I'll copy everything and just write here, then save. So I'm going to remove all the functionality that is there, including the slices, the dispatch. I'm only going to leave the, the React icons. I'm going to remove all this. I'll also remove this, that. Remove this. Let me just let me just start from scratch because uh, I can see that uh, it's going to create a lot of confusion. Let me start from scratch. So I'm going to create an arrow function here, like that, and export it so that if I go back to the shopping cart, we have this text. So let's start. First of all, we shall need to access our information in the shopping cart. So we need the hooks, dispatch, and the use selector. So maybe I need to copy this from the home page to save on time. They're here. So let me just copy them, paste them here. Then make sure you have imported each one of them from uh, the React Redux, even the use selector. And uh, we also need the cut slice. Like that. So the dispatch is for sending the information to the uh, global state. Then the global state is for the use selector which fetches the data from the global state. Then we have one action here.
for adding the data. We shall not even need this, so let's remove it. Because there is nothing we are adding to the global state from shopping cart. We shall only be increasing, reducing, or removing. So let me remove the console logs also. So we are going to have uh, one div here with a uh, maximum with it. Let me just pass max of uh, 1200 pixel like that, then MX auto because I want it to lie at the center. And then uh, I think that is all for now. And then I'll have a table and in this table I'll just be using the flexbox to do all the styling. First of all, the table is going to have the head heading section. Then we shall have the body. So let's describe that. So I'll have another flex display. In this flex display, we shall have the title and the image in one div. So let's have that flex also. Let's just call this title. Then we shall have another one which is going to be uh, it's going to be uh, the price if I'm not wrong so let's have a flex then call this price then apart from price we shall need a quantity so I'll have another flex for quantity Apart from quantity, we shall also need a subtotal. So let's pass that. So subtotal. Then we shall need just a div which is empty to tally with the, the removal of the items from the shopping cart. So an empty flex container in that. Then uh, this one is going to have a full with it. With it full. And this is going to have a flex display, our main container. And I want to justify items at the center and also align items at the center. So item center like that. Then we shall uh, give our head some background color of orange maybe orange 600 and we shall give the text a color of white so text text is going to be white like that then it will also have a padding of uh, maybe four all round so if I check my browser right now for the shopping cart should respond. Just save this. Let me refresh the page. I think there is an error. I need to check two errors. The first one is uh, invalid hook call. Yeah, these hooks must be called within the functional component. So let's paste them there. I think everything will be okay now. So if I refresh, there we have our header. Then uh, it's having a maximum with it of this. Item center, just by center flex. These ones, we also want the spaces in between the divs, so we shall have just by between like that. Yeah. This is more than 1200 pixels, so this should be max with it like that.
then we shall also have a margin at the top. So empty of uh, eight. Our cut is starting to take shape. So the next part is now going to be the body. The body is going to take the same approach. So I'll just come here and use the map method to render the items within the state, which are the objects. So global state dot uh, map, which is going to have a function here that returns some card that I'm going to call a flex display but instead of even using this I'll just copy what I have here and paste it there then we shall pass a product as an argument of our function or a parameter Remember our products have a unique ID, so the key is going to be a product.id. Dot ID, like that, save it. Then uh, we shall fill these other parts. Let's see what we have already. I think there is another error, maybe. So there's no error. Let's just log the state and see what we have. Global state so So if we log that and I inspect our browser. We have an empty cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's why we don't have anything displaying on the body. So we shall go back to the home page, which is uh, loading. I think the internet is uh, getting slow. So I will add three items there. You can see them being displayed. So for our shopping cart, the flex display should be flex call so that it's aligning from top to bottom. Save, yeah. Then for this, I'm not going to have a background of orange, but uh, let me have gray. Maybe gray 100, like that. Then I'm also going to have a gap in between my cut items so I can do that here I need a very tiny gap of like one pixel so one px that's so if I save this yeah so this is representing our products then uh, let's start working on the image we shall have a div for the image. So it's going to be a flex. Then we shall pass our image, which is going to be a product uh, dot image. In that, so if I save that, we shall have those big images there. Then uh, I'm going to control this with the height of uh, maybe six pixel, no six default height for Tailwind. So we shall also have a width of uh, six, like that. Then for the image, I'll give it a class so that I'm able to control its width it also. I'll have a width of uh, 60% of the parent. So if I save that, yeah, those are our images. Then I need the height to be auto. So H auto. I'm sorry that this styling is diverting our mission, but uh, we shall get back. Just 
hang on so that uh, we can get the clear shopping cart UI then we can implement the other parts of uh, the Redux toolkit. So I want to increase the height to maybe 8. Tailwind height. Then uh, item center. Then justify also center. That image looks much better. Then we shall also have within this flex we shall have a title so let me just have a paragraph here and maybe give it a class name of text i want a very tiny text so 12 pixel that then item center in that then in the paragraph um, I'll be having a title of the product so that is going to be product dot title and save it yeah it's uh, displaying then I need to control the widths of all this so here I'll have a width of uh, 20% so let me pass 20 percent sorry about that it's going to be the width of all the other containers 20 20 the other one is going to be 10 because it's very tiny then uh, the bigger one is going to be the one containing the images so i'll change that to 30 I'll do the same for the title so that uh, it's aligned vertically. So this is a 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, then I'll also give uh, my title here some uh, marks with it so I just say marks with it is uh, maybe 200 pixel px and that's uh, if I save that then I'll give it uh, a color so text of uh, gray maybe gray 700 like that there we have our products with the title let's have the prices so for the price it's going to be product dot price then we'll also have a, a color sorry about that so text is going to be uh, uh, gray 700 also i think i need to pass this color for all the other sections that so our cut is taking shape then for the quantity it's just going to be the quantity that we have there so it's going to be product dot quantity hope the spelling is correct yeah we have one 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 then the subtotal is going to be multiplication of the quantity and the price so let's do that mathematics here arithmetic so we shall just take price which is represented by this 
then we multiply by uh, quantity which is going to be product multiplied by quantity like that and uh, I'm in Kenya country called Kenya so I'll have my price in Kenya shillings then I'll also have uh, the expenditure subtotal in Kenya shillings like that looks much better now then we shall need to have an a button here to remove the product completely from the shopping cart so let's do that from the react re, uh, icons I'll just search for remove and the one that I'm going to use is this one here so I'm going to import it at the top and I'm also going to render it render it here it's going to be very tiny so I'll increase this text size to 5xl so text is going to be 5xl so if I save that the icon should be visible good then uh, I'll also be required to increase or reduce the quantity here so let's fix that it's very simple to do that we shall just have uh, two buttons so I'll pass a button here with a minus and I'll pass another button with a, a plus sorry about that so plus like that then uh, I need to align items to the center like that then for the buttons I'll just give them a padding of 4 so a class P4 sorry and then BG uh, very dark gray maybe that then text white then height fit just have a height of uh, maybe 10 the padding of 2 yeah so I'll just copy this styling and pass it for the other button here which will also save us time in that maybe let's give them some length of uh, 100 so with it of uh, maybe 20 does 20 exist in tailwind yeah let's use 16 we should also pass on this other button looks much better ugly but uh, they should be able to do the work maybe we need to change this into a paragraph so let's have a paragraph here with a class name we just want the text to be large so text 3xl and we pass this 
ya. Save it. That. Yeah, I think we can now go back to uh, increasing the products, reducing the products, or removing them completely from our shopping cart. So let's do that. In our slice, we are going to have uh, another action type known as uh, remove that which is going to take a state just like the other action then it also going to take an action information and to remove means that uh, we are going to filter out our array so that we only return the objects that are not the same as the action dot payload so what we are sending to our cut is the object con uh, which is represented by action dot payload so what we want to do is return state dot filter we're going to filter out our products so we're going to check each product id so product dot id what we want to return are the products whose id are not the same as the id of the action dot payload so how do we do that it's going to be not equal to action dot payload dot id like that so let's save it then we go to the cut slice now the cut page we have the cut slice here we need the actions so we shall just destructure the actions which is a remove and this remove we pass to the cut slice like that we have our dispatch function ready so shall just go to this section here and uh, create a click event so on click we need to call an anonymous function which calls our dispatch method to send information and we are working on the remove remember our slice is referring to the action so don't forget that or you'll get an error so remove the product that we are sending which is a just product so if we save that and go to the home page so that we are able to fetch the information then navigate to the shopping cart and click here it is removed you can see that if i click this t-shirt will also be removed yeah so the remove is working the next one is uh, reducing and then increasing so let's work on that we come to our cut slice and create another action known as an increase this is also going to take a state sorry and the uh, action information so to increase we are going to send up an object here so first of all we are going to check if this object is available within our array so if it is there we are going to change its quantity so let's do that it's very simple we use the array map method to check all the uh, objects and update the one that we want to update so we are going to create a constant uh, here known as a temporary state so temp state that is the nickname that i'm giving it's going to be state dot uh, map method so each product will be represented by the product uh, variable then uh, 
we have this function that is going to do some wonders here. So if our product within the array, because we are dealing with each of the product within the array, iterating all the products, so if product within the array, remember the only way we are going to check the unique product is through the ID. So product.id is the same as uh, the ID of the product that we are sending, which is action.payload.id. It means that this product is available. So we want to change this product. We want to increase its quantity. So we shall return a manipulated product, which is going to be a copy of what we already have because we don't want to override everything. We only want to increase the quantity. So let's have a copy of the product. Then we only manipulate the quantity. So quantity is going to be the previous quantity that is there, which is product dot quantity. Then we add it one to it like that. Then uh, if the product is not equal, the ID of the product is not equal to what we are sending, we just return the product the way it is. So let's do that. Return the product. And our new state should now be the temporary state that we have manipulated. So we shall also return temporary state like that. So let's save that. Then we have an increase action. Let's copy that and go to the shopping cart which is uh, this button here. So create a click event. So on click. On click. Let's have a function, anonymous function that is going to call the dispatch, return the dispatch method. In the dispatch method, we are going to pass the action and we are going to pass the product that we want to increase its quantity. Then we also need to import this action from the cut slice, which shall just the structure among the actions like that. So if I go back right now, our cut is empty. Let's add some items. Then click that. You can see the number is increasing. We want to avoid this a lot of decimal points, so we are going to raise our subtotal to two decimal points. So let's do that. Let's pass a bracket here, then dot to fixed. We use to fixed function, two decimal points like that, then save it. So if we go back, you can see it doesn't go beyond two decimal points. Good. So let's work on decrease very fast. We shall just go here. It's similar to this, so we shall uh, copy and paste. And we only re remove the addition and replace it with minus. Then we also need to change this to decrease. like that. Then we need this action in our cut. So we have to import it here. Then we are running out of time. So we shall also copy the click event and paste here. copy the excess. Then we need to dispatch a decrease action here, not an increase. Like that. So if I save this, then go back, add some products, 
three of them. Increase works, decrease also works. But we have a bug, negative prices and negative values that don't exist. So to avoid that is that uh, the moment we hit uh, one, as we are reducing, instead of reducing to below zero, we just remove the product from the shopping cart. So how do we do that? First of all, before we send this product to the, I mean, we, we check this product on the shopping cart because this product is already available in the shopping cart and we are just manipulating it. Remember, the products here are com coming from the shopping cart array. So they are already available there. So instead of uh, completely removing it, we reduce, I, I mean, completely reducing, we rem completely remove it. So first of all, we are going to check if the product that we want to dispatch has a quantity greater than one. If the quantity is greater than one, we dispatch the decrease. But if the quantity is one, we dispatch the removal. So let's do that here. Like that. So we shall have an if statement here that says that uh, if product dot quantity is uh, greater than one shall dispatch a decrease at sorry so let me cut this and paste it there so else instead of reducing we just remove it completely which is uh, this action here so let's just copy that and paste it here. There is an error. So we are copying this and we are pasting it here like that. Yeah, we remove the on click. We only remain with the dispatch here. So if we save that, everything should work clearly now. So increase is working. Reduction. Going below one removes completely like that. Yeah. So the bigger part of the cut is complete. We need to work on the subtotal and the totals. Not the subtotals, but the total of the cut and also clearing the cut. So let's do that very fast. So I'll just come to the bottom of the cut here and create a plex with a width of uh, 200 pixel. Let me have 300 pixel here. Then uh, I'll have the top of this table a flex with a BG of uh, orange, maybe 700 and text white. Then I'll pass total here. Let me just check it's there. So this should have a width of full and a padding of uh, four. Like that. Then I also have another flex here for the body, which is going to have a total expansion. That. And then I'll also need to have a clear cut section. I'll just have a flex. 
I just like using flex boxes throughout, so I don't mind about the styling. This one should have a width it of full also and even this. Yeah. Then flex call so that it's from top to bottom. Then I want this to float right set let me just justify the content flex and at the topmost section no no let, let it let it be there it's, that's okay let's not spend so much time on styling this maybe just uh imagine at the top of eight this one i'm going to give it a uh, padding of four and a bg of uh, purple it's going to be a button that says clear cut so like that then let's write the logic for getting the cut total so i'll just come down here and call this cut total so we are going to use the array reduce method which will help us uh, get to the total expense of the cut so i'll create a constant known as cut total it's the same as our global state dot uh, reduce method so the reduce method takes two arguments. One is going to be a function that is going to do the reduction and the other one is going to be the initial value or the default value. Then this function takes an accumula accumulation and uh, current value. So the accumulated value and the current value in that. So what we want to do is uh, current value represents each object within the array. And then the addition that we get from here is going to be represented by this accumulation. So what, what we want to do is to return the accumulation take the accumulation then what we are interested in because the total expenditure is going to be the quantity on offer product multiplied by the price so a quantity of the product multiplied by the price of each so it's going to be current value multiplied by the price current value dot price not multiplied by the price so dot price then multiplied by the quantity which is going to be current value let me just copy it dot quantity there's an here that is going to be the cut total so we just copy this and paste it here it should give us the total let's see so right now it's zero so if we go to the home page and add some items then the shopping cart you can see it's 184 so if you add this you'll get to 184 maybe just to give it some padding of uh, four then py of 8 like that then we shall give this uh, 
call thing a bg of weight and a padding of one pixel two pixels so that it looks like we have a border let me just use p2 two is too much man so let's use one yeah then the clear cut button should also have a color of text white we are almost done so text white save it that then uh, when we click on it we need to create a slice for clearing the cut very simple this is the simplest so clear it's going to take a state this one does not even require the information we just pass it as a placeholder here then we return an empty array when this is called so let's go to the shopping cart top mode section and on the actions we import that then we go back to the clear cut create a click event here so on click we dispatch an action which is uh, clear so dispatch we just dispatch clear because we don't need any information to manipulate the state we need to clear everything that is in the state so shall just pass the clear action type like that so right now we go to the home page and add three products or even four then we navigate to the shopping cart click on clear everything is gone we can also fix uh, fix this cut total to two decimal points or two fixed to two decimal points like that let's test if it's uh, okay yeah two decimal points so we can increase it's reflected here and in the prices reduction works and removal also works we also need to update this which is going to take the same functionality as uh, the cut total so let's copy this and go to the the main page which is uh, up to jsx where we have our navigation then we shall pause it here but first of all we need to get our state we shall also only need the use the use selector hook which is going to fetch the data from the state so let's copy it it's uh, here and we render it here make sure you have imported at the top that so instead of cut total instead of prices we are interested with the, the quantity so we take the accumulated value we add the quantity so we remove this section then the cut total we are talking about is just the, qu the quantity so let's pass that here so save it right now it's zero so if i go back to the home page and add something you see it's one two if we go to the shopping cart and increase see it's reflecting i think everything is done i don't want to go beyond this you can add more functionality functionalities that are going to check maybe if uh, the shopping cart is uh, having or maybe let's do that so let's just go to the shopping cart section and check if the global state has something let's check it uh, here 
just say that uh, if the global state is not empty, so so if global state dot length is uh, less than one, which means it's zero, then we want to display some text here that says that. Uh, the cart is empty, so H1 cart is empty. That. But if this global state is greater than 1, then this just greater than 0, not 1, so greater than uh, 0. It means that our shopping cart is not empty, so we shall just display all this information that we have described already. So I'll copy this and close it down here. Yeah, maybe. But we need a fragment because uh, of the rendering of uh, the React items. So we shall need a fragment here, if I'm not wrong, and save it. So the cart is empty. Let's go and add something. If we click, the cart is not empty. If we reduce, reduce again, the cart becomes empty. That's all. So thank you for taking your time to watch this video. I hope you have a good concept. See you next time.